Hello, my name is Jim Garrett, and in this very short video, I'm going to show you how you can leverage OpenShift Advanced Cluster Management to provision additional OpenShift clusters outside of the initial installation of OpenShift. Specifically in this demonstration, what I'm going to show is I have already created an OpenShift environment running on top of Microsoft Azure. I'm going to leverage the advanced cluster management feature of OpenShift to provision an additional cluster onto an AWS environment. You can see that I've already installed the OpenShift cluster inside of my Microsoft Azure environment. There's nothing on this screen that really designates that this running is running on Azure. However, I can click on my Microsoft Azure console, and you can see that I currently have three master nodes running and three worker nodes. In order to install the advanced cluster management feature, you first select the operator hub, and you find the advanced cluster management for Kubernetes option, and click on the install button. For this, I take the defaults, and the one thing you'll notice is that it does create a new namespace called Open Cluster Management. Click on the Install button, and this actually takes about five or 10 minutes to complete, so I will return when this is finished. Once the Advanced Cluster Management tool finishes its installation, the second step is to click on the button that says create the multi-cluster hub. Again, I take the defaults for all of the different configurations. And this will initiate the installation of the multi-cluster hub. Again, this also takes a few minutes to complete and I will come back when it's done. After the multi-cluster hub installation finishes running, you'll notice that by clicking on the administrative menu pick, there's now a third option called advanced cluster management. By selecting that option, it does ask you to re-log in again. And once you're in, you can then look at, for example, the clusters that have been already defined. From this page, you can see that it lists my local cluster, which is running on top of Microsoft Azure. You can take a look at all the nodes that are running, and you can see that these nodes actually match up to my Microsoft Azure console. The key to adding a new cluster into this environment is to first define the credentials that allow you to connect to the other cluster. So for example, I'm going to add a credential and I'm gonna to point to an AWS environment, which by the way, if I click on my AWS console, uh, you'll notice that I've already created a, a domain inside of AWS called jagocprhdemo.com. And if I were to go back to my EC2 services window and look at the instances of, that are running, you see that there are no instances running right now. So back into the add credentials, I'm going to give this a name using my initials, AWS. Notice that it asks for a namespace and you need to select that open cluster management namespace and then paste in the domain from the AWS environment. If you've ever worked with AWS, you know there are two credentials that it asks for. One is the AWS access key, and the second is the AWS secret key access. Uh, I'm not going to actually type those in um, for security reasons. Another piece of information it's gonna request from you is a pull secret for connecting through SSH. So let me populate those pieces of information 
and I will return in a minute. So you can see I've populated all the information and I'm now ready to click the Add button. So now that I have the credential created, the next step is let's go back and try to create a cluster. It's really pretty simple. You click on the Create Cluster button, choose the type of cluster you'd like to add, select the credential that gives you access to that cluster, click on the Next button. We're going to give it a name called JAG AWS. I'm going to leave the cluster set empty. I've got the base domain defined. I select the version of OpenShift that I'd like to deploy. And I can add any labels. For example, I can add a label that says usage equals production. And then for the remaining information, I'm just going to take the defaults. So the node pools, I'm going to stick on to the US East 1 zone. I'm going to take the defaults for networking, for proxy, automation, click Review, click the Create button, and it's now starting the process of provisioning into the AWS environment. Notice that there is a link that says View Logs. If you want to, you can click on View Logs, and it will display a screen that will show you that the installation has initiated and any of the information in those logs will then be presented. It does take a few seconds for the logs to, to initiate as far as the, the connection to that environment, but you can see uh, now we have logs that are being produced. And again, this takes 20 to 30 minutes to provision. So I'm going to pause and come back when it's done. We see from this log information that the cluster has now completed the installation process. If we go back to the Advanced Cluster Management Console, we'll see that there's now two clusters. We have the original cluster, which is on the Microsoft Azure Hyperscaler site. And we also have a second cluster, which is on the Amazon Web Services. If I click on that cluster, Notice that I now have a total of six nodes. There are three master nodes and three worker nodes. Notice that I can also modify the machine pool. I can change the machine pool so that I can scale it up or down, or I can actually enable auto scaling. If I look at the AWS EC2 dashboard, notice that this should mimic or, or convey exactly what was in the Advanced Cluster Management Console. For example, if I look at the instances that have been deployed, there are three master nodes running and three worker nodes. And of course, there's one bootstrap node which is, has been terminated. That was the node that was used during the installation. This concludes the demonstration of how to leverage the Advanced Cluster Management Tool and in this case, install from a Microsoft Azure cloud cluster into an AWS cloud cluster. If you'd like to learn more about this, you can visit cloud.redhat.com slash products slash Azure OpenShift. I hope you've enjoyed this very short video. If you have any additional questions, please reach out to your local Red Hat sales representative.